Good morning, afternoon or evening, depending on when you're watching this. I am um, going to talk today about key workers. It's Key Worker Sunday, apparently. And this month, we're going to have various interviews and focus on um, different sorts of key worker. Um, I'm mindful that the things that might be officially classed as key workers doesn't necessarily cover it. So this service is about not only helping, but about thanking. Um, and when we come back to join together, we'll start with a short prayer. I'd like to start this service um, by saying that I am hugely grateful for the people who have really helped me get through this time. I want to officially thank Abigail, who's helped me with these services, with ideas and generally being a good egg. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you to all the people in the church who support me um, through their own difficulties with grace and love. So we're thinking particularly today of all of the key workers, all those people who help us. And we will move on to some more bits of worship and then I'll come back and share a few words. I'm thankful for all the fears I felt, for God showed me laughter. I'm thankful for all the fights I've been through, for God showed me the smile after. How could I thank him enough? He moulded me and now I'm tough. When you smile to reassure, that's half the cure. I'm thankful for every obstacle I faced. I'm thankful for every one of my mistakes he erased. I'm thankful for every destructive asteroid, for God was there when I was destroyed. I'm thankful for God showing me the way. How could I ever repay for what God did to me that day? Oh, 
lost shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down So we're thinking about thankfulness. We're thinking about all those people who help us. So I'm just going to start with a short prayer. It may seem a bit self-serving. There's mention of clergy in it. Um, but as I said before, what we do as clergy is underpinned by all the wonderful faithful people in our churches. So let us pray. Holy God, we remember all those who are working to keep things going those working in the NHS and those around it helping to keep things working, those keeping our streets clean and collecting our rubbish, those harvesting, delivering and selling the food in our shops, those keeping us secure and our utilities functioning, those looking after the children of key workers and all our children, those helping to care for the elderly and vulnerable, clergy of all religions, seeking to minister in difficult times. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So over the course of the services for this month of July, we're going to hear from different um, people that we would think of as key workers, hoping to do some interviews with different people. But I think as much as we recognise their wonderful contribution, we also need to recognise that of other people who perhaps don't qualify for the label of key worker. I'm very mindful from my own experience that many of us have kept going throughout the coronavirus period and at times that has been so hard. When you have a, a role that classes you as a key worker, you can become consumed with helping other people. I realised doing a retreat um, during this time of coronavirus when I was encouraged to document my experiences that I hadn't really given myself time to experience the coronavirus as an individual. I had been consumed by experiencing it as a minister, as a wife, as a mum, as a daughter. And sometimes it's important to stop recognise what we do and also give ourselves time to process and recover from our experiences. At the same time as the coronavirus highlighting lots of um, so important work from key workers, we're also reminded to be thankful not just for them but also for the world around us and for our God. We're called to be faithful people. So there's a reading from 2 Samuel which says, May the Lord now show you kindness and faithfulness, and I too will show you the same favour because you have done this. We're called to work out that love of God through caring for other people. And then in 2 Corinthians, there's a reading which goes like this. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving 
to overflow to the glory of God. So in difficult times like these, sometimes we forget to give thanks to the people that are helping us. I don't know about you, but I've, I've made a particular point of thanking people that I've engaged with. And I was quite taken aback the other day when I happened to have a, a doctor's appointment well, with the nurse. And as I was leaving, I did my thing, which I, I say, thank you for what you're doing. And the nurse replied, thank you. And it really struck me. This wasn't a church member. And I thought, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> but we all try and we all do our best. So when we think about Thanksgiving, we might forget to give thanks to God. One of the things that sprang into my mind about Thanksgiving is, is the book of Psalms. There are all sorts of different Psalms and they go through every human emotion. There's lament, there's desperation, but there is also thanksgiving and that coincides with praise. So there are loads and loads of different Psalms that do this, but through lots of the Psalms and, and in lots of past passages in the Bible, we are given the command to rejoice in God, to praise him, to be thankful in all things. And there's something very therapeutic about finding something to be thankful for. So I'd like to remind you or encourage you at this point to think about, is there somebody you could just give, give a ring and say thank you? Or a thank you card you can send? Or someone you can say thank you more to? We say thank you quite flippantly, but we can say it with feeling. And sometimes we have to give thanks for God's presence in our lives, even when we can't see the fullness of what he wants us to do, or, or it can be hard. But God tells us to praise and show gratitude. There are loads of Bible passages I can refer to. But one of the really powerful ones is from Philippians that says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we can choose this gratitude. We can choose to be the people who say thank you, say well done, who praise others, rather than the person who's thinking, well, that hasn't happened to me and no one's helped me. Let's choose to be grateful. If we remember that there's something to be grateful for every day, then we can live out our faith in a way that's so attractive to other people. Something that makes people say, oh, I'll have some of what they're having. I want to see the world like that. I want to find the good. And there is always something good. Maybe think back over today or yesterday. What was the good thing that happened? There's a really lovely practice to get into where at the end of each day, you might think of a couple of things that maybe didn't go so well. Things that you could do with God's help to do better. But then to think about what am I thankful for today? You can always find something. I can find things today. And things that I'm thankful for, more often than not, come in the form of people. So as much as we're remembering our key workers this month as we go through our services, let's remember the people who just care. There isn't really any recognition for it, but we can be the ones who recognise it. And we are called to be the carers too, not because we're looking for recognition or thanks, but because Christ has called us to be his hands in this world, to be his window into our faith, to show that our faith transforms us. So thank you for watching. Thank you for giving me this time. Thank you for engaging with what we've been doing on social media Thank you for being you. At a time when the Methodist Church has just agreed to recognise same-sex marriage as an opportunity in our churches, not every church will do it, but for those who do, we're saying thank you for being you.
as you are. Peace be with you. His favor 